So I got my hands on some of the early sketches of uh, the character designs of Batman and Bruce Wayne by Sean Murphy and today we are going to study them by tracing them out and then figuring out how the Loomis head works for them. By the end of this comic book art lesson you would have learned all about how to draw the superhero head anatomy and how the varying how the proportions vary with the different muscular structures and frames how to draw buff characters and how to find your own style how to make them look cool and muscular and appealing like the way Sean Murphy does this video won't be based solely on adopting Sean Murphy's style but also discovering your own style inventing your own proportions and making the figures look more cool and appealing to look at Okay, what exactly do I mean by varying proportions of the Loomis head? Well, if you haven't yet seen Proko's art lesson on varying proportions of the Loomis head, then do check it out. You also need to learn all the basic anatomy of the human head before jumping into drawing the superhero head anatomy and proportions. Because that's the basic foundation you have to build before moving on to the next stage, which is varying proportions to suit the characteristic traits, character, whatever. If you don't know anything about the Loomis set, just learn how to draw it from the side view and the front view. The Joker has uh, like a, a, a very long chin. Like This length is usually equal to the length from the end of the nose to the end of the chin. But in Joker, the distance between the end of the nose and the end of the chin is really long. So... This is one thing you need to make sure of and I'm going to discuss how long the chin is um, which is why we need to first um, figure out where the circle lies in this like this character uh, so I did it I traced it right over here now I know what some of you might be thinking hey the circle doesn't quite fit in we have to leave some space for the hair right the head can't possibly end there like the hair sits over the head look look at the batman right here you're making the head too long well I know what I'm doing I'm planning this all out I'm going to divide it into a few parts and everything will make sense and I'm going to cut off a part of the head later on just have faith in me you won't regret spending like 15 minutes of your time you start by drawing a circle then dividing it into four parts just like you divide a pizza then we will have to divide each semicircle into thirds now this is where things start to change you divide this particular third into two halves Remember, the line that we just drew to separate them into two halves will be the new beginning point of the ears. Now, we know that this is the part where the ears are placed in an average Loomis head. Well, things are different in Sean Murphy's drawing of the head. We see that the ears have been shifted upwards, high above the center point of the circle. Here, let me show you both the images on top of each other with their opacity decreased. If we look at this image closely enough, we will start to see all the differences. I know you all find it impossible to trust your progress on a random 14.5 years old Indian kid with a terrible accent. So I ain't gonna tell you to have my word for it. I'm just gonna show you both the images on top of each other with their opacity decreased when we finish the tutorial, alright? And it'll match perfectly. You can have my word for that. We know the beginning of the ear, which is the line we just drew to separate that third into two equal halves. What we need to find next is the ending point of the ear. And to find that, we must divide this particular third into three equal parts. Not two equal parts. I did a mistake right now and I'm gonna rub it. Keep in mind that this is the particular third which is divided into three more parts. We are going to move on with placing the nose, the eyes and the eyebrows now. We know the nose ends at the same level as the end of the ears.
But here we're gonna end it where the first third ends. So that's the end of the nose. Now we're gonna figure out the placement of the eyebrows now. The ending of the eyebrows are just on the same level as the beginning of the ears. If we draw a straight line passing through the center of the circle, then it's gonna pass through that sharp edge of the nose and it'll be just below the eyes. Now we're gonna cut off a part of the top of the head and to do this, you're gonna wanna divide this particular third into either two parts and then cut off the head halfway across and your character will look more like Bruce Wayne as drawn by Sean Murphy or you can divide it into four parts and then cut off the head like this and your character will end up looking more like an average human being. It's all up to you how much of the head do you want to keep, right? I'm just gonna show you what Sean Murphy does. At the end of the day, everyone has their own styles. Everyone varies proportions to stylize their drawings and also to suit that character. The point I'm trying to establish is that you can't practically adopt a person's style and make it your own. You can't completely like adopted dot to dot i myself haven't adopted completely sean murphy style so why am i making this video why i'm doing all this um i'm doing all this to let everyone know how to vary the proportions to what extent where to vary it why am i so obsessed with exaggerating proportions and these stuff well, because the comic book industry wants stereotypical proportions for their characters like Joker might have really thin neck while the average person or an average extra in a comic, a person who is not really the main character has kind of an average head, right? And Superman has a really thick neck and uh, maybe Louis Lane or some, someone like that has an average neck. Right. Now we're gonna figure out the ending point of the chin. Firstly, you're gonna wanna uh, draw a straight line passing through the end of the ear. Then we're gonna divide the third third into four equal parts. By the way, these are the other three parts, right? We will take this distance and paste it over here. Not exactly paste it, but you get my point. We are going to draw the jaw and the jaw muscles now. The jaw will be placed more backwards as compared to the normal placement. And the ears will shift backwards with the jaw muscles. After drawing the hair and everything else, I came up with this. I told you guys I'll show you both the images with the opacity decrease and here it is. See how the proportions match perfectly, except the chin needs to be jutting out. We are starting to see the obvious differences. I'm making it too stiff. I need to curve the bridge of the nose and the chin needs to be jutting outwards with a slight curve. I think these particular features, the jutting out of chin, show up to a certain degree a certain amount of confidence and determination. So if you want to put that in your characters, do include these features. Now, if you want to avoid the complications of trying to draw the chin like the way Sean Murphy does, then you can also invent the length of the chin. And the length of the chin can be exactly like the Loomis heads. But the chin isn't gonna turn out the way Sean Murphy would draw it. The character will end up looking really buff. 
here let me show you what i mean by that Notice how the face appears more bulky when I make the eyes smaller. One more thing, there are no hard and fast rules and norms about drawing superhero proportions. You can always exaggerate them whenever you want to and however you want to. And you can always adopt different techniques of drawing superhero proportions like I am doing right now. Let's now discuss a tad bit more about what makes something more like superhero-y, if you will. Sean Murphy is in a way increasing the length of the chin and decreasing the length of the forehead. What does this tell you? Superhero proportions. We increase the thickness of the uh, neck. Like look, look at Gordon here. His neck is like only this thick and this guy's neck is like muscular, ribbed and thing and stuff um, what what we are aiming for is a, a really long chin a really thick neck and a really short distance between the eyebrows and the end of the nose and harsh and sharp edges not soft and rounded ones that gives us kind of like a muscular figure and small eyes small eyes is another thing people look for in drawing like the superhero anatomy and like villains muscular villains have small eyes like if there's a really big person over here should I, 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 I should have planned the proportions out in the eyes I usually make the eyes really small and almost hidden beneath um, the shadows and like these bones completely wrapped in shadows and stuff, a thick neck, a small forehead, this shit and a really like big these muscles. So we are gonna, in almost most of his drawings like there's this pointed ridge over here and not over there. I don't know, in, in, in most of his stuff, where Bruce Wayne isn't like um, wearing that mask here, this thing and stuff. So we're gonna do that um, small thing over here and then move on with this. And the normal neck should be around here somewhere. But then, uh, we are making muscular uh, guys, like, like I told you before, this should be like one line, as a superman. If anyone asks me whose style do you follow, um, then I'll simply tell him no one in particular because my style is currently a cross between Jim Lee, Greg Capullo and Sean Murphy and a bunch of comic artists I haven't yet discovered. I use some inking ideas from Jim Lee's stuff, some selected pencil strokes and line works from Greg Capullo and Sean Murphy. For example, Sean Murphy uses a bunch of oblique parallel lines connecting the corners of the mouth to the jaw muscles which will serve as shadows. Jim Lee on the other hand has his own way of representing those exact same shadows. So my style is switching in and out between either of theirs. And by the way, Jim Lee did not draw this piece. I drew it, just, just, just so we are clear and Jim Lee doesn't get blamed for drawing something so sucky. And I'm not saying this so as to brag, it, it really is, like if you look carefully, 
the stomach is too thin and a, a, a lot of stuff like the inking etc is really bad i need to work on those all the other artworks you will see in this video are also mine just to dodge copyrights i think the key to finding your style is to draw like a lot like you wake up in the morning take your pencil put some songs on and then continuously draw and draw and draw and then you're tired you do nothing you still draw and i use i sometimes use these a3 pages and fill them up completely in one setting and it's just so fun trying out different proportions different character designs to suit them after learning the lumis method really method studying the saros head the planes everything just seems so fun like i'm not saying i'm a pro and have learned all of these Obviously I have a lot to learn about the planes and this stuff and sometimes it's tiring but once I acquired like a basic knowledge it's really fun like I I'm trying different brushes like this is a really one thick brush art nothing else and different poor people styles like this is Angel Gano style and Jim Lee combined shoot I have screwed up all the neck placements of this but I've got no time to improve this and let it out again because I've been working on this video for like 6 or 7 days. One more thing before I go is that it's not necessary that Sean Murphy draws his superhero drawings in this manner like starting with the Loomis head but I'm just I just did this thing because I thought it was oversimplified and easy to draw like once you get the hang of it it's not that hard like it will seem hard at first but it's not really after you practice it uh, practice it like four times if you're wondering how to cut off that circle when you are drawing the front of the head um, then it's a normal cutting like you draw the one thirds and then you cut it over there